I'm talking you to, to you today on Hiroshima Day about the question of human rights, science and the law. And in this I'm representing a new committee called the International Committee on Nuclear Justice, which was launched in Vilnius uh, in December 2011 and later was added to by people from Geneva in May 2012. The purpose of this committee is to carry out and research um, legal avenues of preventing the continuing contamination of the environment by the nuclear industry and by weapons usage. And the first thing that, that we are launching today is um, a petition to the European Parliament which is based on human rights legislation and it's based on the fact that there is an enormous amount of information available now, uh, peer-reviewed literature, scientific papers, which show that the contamination of the environment is causing the deaths of millions of people. And up till now, nobody has really thought about ways in which they can legally stop the nuclear industry and the um, military from continuing to contaminate the environment, because whenever they try to do this, activists and NGOs, and there are enough of those, and I'm talking to you all now, they get blocked by the argument that the risk model, the International Commission on Radiological Protection risk model, shows that these contaminations are safe and cannot possibly harm anybody. But there is now enough evidence to show that this is wrong. Scientific evidence in the peer review literature. And in the document that I should be sending you, and which you can find on the website of the International Commi Committee on Nuclear Justice, which is nuclearjustice.org, you will find this document, which is a template for a petition to the European Parliament, which I will now explain. Now, this actually only applies to people who live in the states of the European Union. And later on, we will be dealing with people who live in other countries, like Japan and the United States, countries which have signed up to various international conventions on human rights. And we will be using human rights legislation. But for now, the first um, launch of this uh, Petition, this idea will be through a petition to the Petitions Committee of the European Parliament, which I will now explain. You will find this petition uh, on the website, as I said, of the International Commission on Nuclear Justice. And what I want you to do is to download the petition and to sign it. And if you like to add to it anything that you, you have that concerns you about the particular situation in your country, um, about nuclear industry, about contamination, possibly about child health, whatever it happens to be that, that is your concern, add that to the petition, sign it, and send it by registered post to the Petitions Committee of the European Parliament at Rouvierts in Brussels, and we'll put the address up for you to do this. Now, I talked about this in Geneva, and I said there, when people were concerned about what could be done, that there was something that could be done. And if you all do this, it will cause a tsunami of petitions to appear. In August, and this is important because in August the, the European Parliament is in recess and, and these petitions will have to just build up in the Petitions Committee and they will have to deal with them. And the reason that they will have to deal with them is this, that the petition is based on the present European Parliament, the present, the present European law, which is a directive uh, uh, based on the Euratom Treaty it's the Euratom 9629 Directive, which is called the Basic Safety Standards Directive. Inside this directive is a clause, and I'll show you the clause here. It's, it's written down. Uh, under, under Chapter 5, Justification and Regulatory Control of Practices, and we're talking about practices involving the release of radioactivity to the environment, Article 20 says... Existing types of practices shall be reviewed as to their justification whenever new and important evidence about their efficacy or potential consequences is acquired. Now this is a terribly important clause because what it means is that all of the practices, that's every situation where radioactivity is released to the environment, has to be reconsidered on the basis of evidence that shows that the risk model that is currently being used to address this practice, and this is the risk model of the ICRP, if it shows that this risk model is wrong or raises questions about its safety, then these practices have to be re-justified. And this petition will force that to come about because it is law. So it's not just a question of complaining to your MP. It's not just a question of writing something saying, oh, I don't like this on some vast 
tsunami of postcards that go to somebody who just puts them in the bin. This is a legal process which has to be dealt with and they will have to deal with it. But only if you send the petition along. Now let me explain what this is about. Under, under um, international human rights agreements and legislations, there are various clauses which say that each person is entitled to live in an environment which is safe for their health. This has been a universally signed up to by every single country in the world, and certainly by the European Union. Now the problem is that people who live in environments that in environments that are contaminated with radioactivity are not living in an environment which is safe for their health. And so this is a contravention of an international human rights legislation agreement. And the only reason that they can say this is that the, this is the European Union, the Commission, in this particular case, that these things are harmless, is they can say that the International Commission on Radiological Protection says that, 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 these, that the doses that are associated with these exposures are too low to cause any effects. But in this petition, at the end of it, we have gathered together 55 peer-reviewed references, each of which, on its own, shows that the ICRP risk model is false. And not false by a very small amount, but false by a very, very large amount, so that thousands of people are dying, no, millions of people are dying as a result of these exposures. People living along the shores of the Baltic Sea, people who are living along the shores of the Irish Sea, children who are leaving, living near nuclear installations. There is a long, long list. People in Iraq that have been exposed to radioactivity from uranium. I'll just go through a few of these because I don't want to hold you too long. The most important thing is this take-home message. You must get this petition, download it, and sign it, and send it to the European Parliament at the address that we'll give you. So I'll just go briefly through some of the evidences, and they're all backed up by peer-reviewed studies. Firstly, there's childhood cancer near nuclear installations. An enormous number of studies have shown that if you live within five kilometres of a nuclear power station, your children have double the risk of getting childhood leukaemia. There's no question about this. The radiation causes the childhood leukaemia, and yet the ICRP risk model says that this is impossible. And the, the error in the model needed to account for these childhood leukaemias, and the latest study is an enormous study from the German government, the error necessary to explain this is upwards of a thousand times. So in other words, the risk model of the RCRP is wrong by at least one thousand times in terms of it, 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 with regard to this particular situation. And now also here's another thing. There was an increase in infant leukemia after Chernobyl in those children who were in the womb at the time of the Chernobyl radiation. So it could only be the Chernobyl radiation that caused the increase in infant leukemia. And the, these uh, uh, studies were done in a number of different epidemiological settings, in Greece, in Germany, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Belarus. Wherever anybody looked, they found increases in infant leukemia in these children who were in the womb. And that shows an error in the ICRP risk model of about 400 times. Then there was a study in northern Sweden by Martin Tondell. Uh, that showed that people who lived in areas contaminated with cesium from Chernobyl had, had cancer rates proportional to the amount of contamination. This was published in the peer review literature. It's there for anyone to see. It shows that the error in the ICRP risk model is about 600 times. A very important study now is one by Hagen Scherb in Germany, and he looked at, the, and his colleague Christina Voigt looked at the sex ratio, that's the ratio of boys to girls who were born after accidents like Chernobyl after the weapons testing fallout and living near nuclear power stations and he found that there was a perturbation in the sex ratio, quite clear, highly statistically significant, published in the peer review literature. It means that millions of children have died, millions of children have died as a result of these exposures to, 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 to ionising radiation. Shows another, that shows a problem with the ICRP risk model of hundreds of times, thousands of times. In fact, the ICRP risk model doesn't even consider the effects on, on, on infant mortality and, ch and children. So, we have cancer and, and leukemia, lymphoma and heart disease in uranium workers. Very recent study by Irina Gusevacano, in, in, who works for the French nuclear industry, incidentally, 
So not somebody from the, if you like, the lefty side, somebody who works for the industry, very clever epidemiologist, has studied uranium workers and shown that they have a huge increase in heart, heart disease effects and in cancer, in leukemia and lymphoma. This shows that the ICRP risk model is out by a factor of 2,400 times in the peer review literature. Various other things. I won't go through all of them. They're all on the end of this report. I, I'll just finally mention, of course, the work done by my colleague Alexei Yablokov, who collected together all of the information that came out from the ex-Soviet Union territories contaminated by Chernobyl and showed that there were enormous health disaster effects in, in Belarus, in uh, Ukraine, in, in those parts of the Russian Federation that were exposed to the Chernobyl effects in Bryansk. There is just so much evidence. We have an embarrassment of riches, but the problem is that nobody will look at it. Well, we're going to force them to look at it by sending this petition to the European Parliament Petitions Committee with all of its 55 references, and you are going to help us to do this by contacting us at info at nuclearjustice.org uh, or else just going to the website and downloading the, the uh, information. And I hope that you will contact us and tell us that you're doing it. So we'll have a sort of a list of the number of people who have helped us in this way. For the first time, we can probably make a difference. We can probably really stop the nuclear industry from, for, from continuing to pollute. And, and I don't blame these people. I have to say that we're, we're not talking about bad guys and good guys here, although actually there are some bad guys. I think in general we're talking about ignorance and uh, people who are tied into a sort of culture of physics and a culture of the past, a culture of a risk model that was set up in 1952 and hasn't really been altered since then. And so we have to forgive these people for what they've done, but we cannot continue to allow them to do it. Thank you.